the colors. Praise and arms. Please see. Have a seat. First off, I'd like to thank all of you for making it here tonight. It's our pleasure and our privilege to be able to give you this flag day ceremony dedicated to a really great gentleman called Ed Flory, who was American Legion for many, many decades. I'd like to introduce our queens out front here. Our Veterans Homecoming Queen for the American Legion, Gabriella Sutherland. Yeah. 
Senior Princess, Melissa Martin. First attendant, Olivia Chrisman. Second attendant, Isabel Miller. Third attendant, Cambria Aries Rodriguez. Junior Miss Cinco de Mayo, Isabel Chavez. <laughs> Little Miss Cinco de Mayo, Anvia Marie Lopez. <laughs> Springville Rodeo Queen, Samantha DeMar. <laughs> Springville Rodeo Princess, Natalie Willingham. Let's give these girls a big round of surprise. They do a lot throughout this year. A Cinco de Mayo. Did I miss one? Yes. You're not going to believe this. I was shortchanged and I apologize. What is your name? Emily Morena. I apologize. I'll take the hit on that one, Emily. You can find me afterwards. I'd like to thank the Porterville Fire Department for being a part of this and their color guard and helping us do the flag again for the second year. Let's give them a big round of applause. They are just unbelievably the best of the best, and we thank you. Please stand. At this time, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Pledge. Please be seated. Our invocation will be given by Father Dan Avila. Father Dan. Let's bow our heads in thanksgiving to God for the great nation in which we live, the freedoms we enjoy, and those remembering those who have paid the price to allow us these freedoms. Gracious and loving God, we praise you and we thank you. We are truly a nation under you, under your protection, under your blessing, under your wisdom and guidance and your light. Though we are imperfect, we strive, O oh Lord, to be a light shining upon a hill, a beacon towards freedom and truth and justice. May this flag of ours, which we honor today, be a constant symbol to us of those virtues, of the freedom that we pro pro proclaim to every nation, the justice we try to live our lives by and be governed by, and the truth and light that we strive to shine upon the earth through our lives. Father, we ask your blessing upon our community of Porterville and upon this great nation. We ask these blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Dan. Let's give him a big round of applause for taking out of his busy schedule. I know how busy they are. At this time, Ed Flory's son, Joe Flory, would like to say a few words. We have a good handrail, don't we? Uh, I've seen worse. Um, first off, um, I want to thank uh, Five Day Committee for uh, honoring my father. Um, he uh, was a very humble person and would have probably told them in the background, no, 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 you don't need to do that. Um, but he uh, was very, uh, uh, very committed to Flag Day. Uh, um, this is just another one of the uh, numerous uh, patriotic holidays that uh, he was very, very committed to. Obviously, the big ones are Memorial Day and Veterans Day, but um, he took this one on uh, very seriously as well because uh, you don't 
to fight for that flag and not have some uh, uh, honor and, uh, and uh, uh, duty towards it. Um, so um, um, thank you once again to the flag committee for this, uh, for this honor from my father. Um, he, uh, um, he would have been, said he was a very humble person, but he, uh, he would have accepted it with the uh, grace that he has accepted um, all the awards that he has uh, uh, received over the years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. At this time, City Councilman Greg Meister would like to present a proclamation to the, to the committee. Thank you, Robert. My fellow citizens of Porterville, the community that makes up an all-American city, it is a great honor to be before you. I want to take the time to recognize some distinguished guests on behalf of the city of Porterville. One, the Eisenhower Jumpers. Let's give them a hand. We have with us Rachel Clement, uh, Congressman David Valadeo's representative. <laughs> and Eric Coyne, uh, Senator Hurtado's representative. So thank you. I uh, also see it here present is Alexandra Macedo, candidate for District 33. Thank you for coming and celebrating Black America. <laughs> We gotta give a, a big shout out to Nick Slater singing yeah. the national anthem. You know, he's one of our own. He's a TC boy and he's got a sound between Johnny Cash and Hank Williams Jr. We love you. Thank you. I'd like to also recognize our city manager, Patrice Hildreth. Thank you for coming and attending. We have our our police department and Chief Castillo, thank you. And our, our fire department, uh, Assistant Chief Skiles with our fire department and honor guard, thank you for being here today. You know, and I, I wanna give a special recognition uh, to our county supervisor and guest speaker tonight, that's Dennis Townsend. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, many, don't know some of the work he's done this last year and I, I want to share it with you uh, I feel it's a, a huge one as you know uh, there's a movement in our country to move God from from everything right from our, our government from our schools and, and, and it's a scary thing and, and it was done here in Tulare County and Dennis Townsend last year as chair of the Board of Supervisors was able to bring back prayer to our county meetings and he also got ensh the enshrined into the county chambers in God We Trust. So let's give him a big hand. And last but not least, uh, you know, I, I know they're part of the Flag Day Committee, but I want to give a, a big hand out to Robert Lasatovich, commander of American Legion Post 20 and American Legion Post 20. These men fought overseas for us to come home and serve our community and, and to, to keep our traditions alive. And, and I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again because it's true. It's because of men and women like you throughout American history, we the people may know the blessings of liberty. So thank you. Amen. And somehow every year they find the most talented beautiful young, young ladies in our community, the veterans homecoming queen and court. You are the best of Porterville and represent our future. Thank you for your service to our community. When we look at the flag, some say it represents an idea, the idea that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This idea is enshrined in our constitution and has made our flag the symbol of freedom around the world. In 1787, exiting the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia, Benjamin Franklin was asked if we had a monarchy or a republic. He famously replied, a republic, if you could keep it. The constitution is the contract between we the people and the government. 
if the government becomes tyrannical, it is our duty to alter or abolish it in order to save our republic. A quote from Ronald Reagan. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in our bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. When I look at the flag, I see more than an idea. I see my home, my family. I see you, the community, tradition. I see the past and I see the future. Though we may be on hard times where we've seen our government vandalize and weaponize across the land, I still hold hope, hold hope because of you, the people. We will never give in, excuse me, we will never give up the idea of individual liberty. We will never give in to tyranny. And because we hold the stilly reserve of the American spirit, old glory will fly high and continue to be the beacon of freedom around the world. So for 42 years, this proclamation has been read and I get, I get the great honor of reading it for the 43rd year on behalf of Martha Flores, the mayor of Porterville. Whereas there is three week period between Flag Day, June 14th, 2024 and Independence Day, July 4th, 2024. And whereas the local patriotic, patriotic activities during this period have grown to, to involve the support of several community-based institutions, service clubs and community organiza organizations and whereas these organizations consist of the Elks Lodge, Emblem Club, American Legion, American Legion Auxiliary, Old Glory Club, Grocery Outlet, 50 West Olive, LLC, MD, Atkinson's, Save Mart Supermarkets, Porterville Chamber of Commerce, the Porterville Exchange Club, and the Porterville Recorder. And whereas these organizations form the Porterville Flag Day Committee, and whereas it is the wish of the Porterville Flag Day Committee for the entire community to join with them in the events occurring during this period. And whereas the Porterville Flag Day Committee encourages all citizens to display old glory each day from Flag Day to Independence Day and to participate in the 43rd Annual Flag Day Ceremony at 50 West Olive Avenue at 6.30 p.m. on June 14, 2024. Now, therefore, on behalf of Martha A. Flores, Mayor of the Port of of the city of Porterville and Porterville City Council, I, Greg Meister, do hereby proclaim the period between June 14th and July 4th, 2024 as Freedom Days in Porterville and encourage all citizens to participate in the many patriotic activities proclaimed this 14th day of June, 2024. Thank you. Well, I, I get the great honor of introducing our county supervisor and our guest speaker tonight, Dennis Townsend. Bravo! All right. All right. Well, thank you. It's uh, it really is a great uh, a great honor and a great privilege to be here. Uh, this is such a wonderful community that keeps this celebration going and other celebrations going uh, you know it you don't see this around that much uh, I wanted to before I get started with my little speech I wanted to uh, present a proclam or present a certificate of recognition to the flag day committee and this is from the whole board and it says County of Tulare Board of Supervisors certificate of recognition Porterville flag day committee in honor of Porterville's 43rd annual Flag Day celebration, let it wave. Thank you for your commitment to educate. Okay, all right. And now we'll have Eric Coyne from Senator Melissa Hurtado's office. Thank you, Dennis. What a great day to be at Porterville. On behalf of Senator Hurtado, uh, we wanted to recognize the Flag Day Committee, uh, but really, you represent the community of Porterville in this sense. This is a 43-year tradition, but we know that Porterville has long been one of the most patriotic areas of our nation. Yay. So these are the Senator's words. Your commitment to honor Flag Day and celebration of American ideals, American history, and American liberty 
is to be commemorated. The American flag is a representation of those ideals and a basis for our liberty. Thank you for your outstanding leadership and dedication to our community. we're doing serial introductions. Rachel, representing David Valadeo. Good evening, everyone. It's uh, so good to be here today to celebrate this ongoing and rich tradition. You just uh, once and do you start talking or do you stop and how does that go? But that's, it's going to work out just fine. Well, you know, again, a big thanks to the to the Flag Day Committee and the members uh, for keeping this great event alive. Um, you know, this event, 43 years now, it's unique. It really is unique. If you look around the valley, look around the state, look around the United States, um, unfortunately, it's rare today. So congratulations to the committee and all the organizations involved in organizing and implementing this important ceremony. Thanks to all of you for coming out and attending. It's always kind of a hot time, right? It's in June and you got to you sit out in the black uh, asphalt parking lot. And so that just shows your support, your respect for the flag. It's, it's really, it's a visible demonstration of your unswerving patriotism and an act of honoring the flag, the symbol of the greatest nation on this earth. You know, by honoring this flag, by respecting this flag, by keeping these ceremonies and observances alive and vital, you're actually honoring the United States of America. And very importantly, you're honoring the idea and the ideology of America. The idea and the belief that this is a unique and an incredible experiment in all of human history. This experiment in which the people of a nation, all the people of a nation, participate and take a role in governing themselves. I ask people this question a lot when they complain about things that are going on in the government. I say, who is the government in the United States? What's the answer? We are. Say it loud. We are. That's right, we are. You are the government in this country. Many people get that wrong. Many people will point to, to Washington, D.C. and they say, it's those clowns over there on the East Coast. That's the government. <laughs> or they'll point to Sacramento and say, no, it's those clowns up in uh, Northern California. They're, they're, that's the government. Or they'll point to Visalia and say, no, it's those clowns at the Board of Supervisors. <laughs> and down the, and down the, the road. But, uh, but it is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. The government of this nation is you, and that's what makes it special. Uh, my father died when I, was a, when I was a child, and although his name was Darwin Cicero Townsend, <laughs> the, the grandparents liked the name for famous people, so Darwin Cicero Townsend, and his nickname was Heavy. <laughs> yeah, I, I do take after him quite a bit. <laughs> but I only know him as Daddy because I was five years old whenever he passed away, and Daddy served in World War II. He wasn't killed in action. But when he passed away, he did receive a funeral with military honors because that's what this nation does for its heroes and for their families. One of my earliest memories is that the soldiers folding the flag, I was sitting right next to my mom, and the soldiers were folding the flag and then the one soldier knelt down in front of my mom in his full dress uniform and his shoes shined, spit shined, and he quietly and solemnly expressed gratitude on behalf of a grateful nation while presenting that carefully folded flag to my mom. That same flag's in my office today. And that scene still really gets to me whenever I go to a funeral with military honors or whether I do a funeral and it has military honors. Uh, because it affects me because of what that ceremony means. What our flag represents and how much respect that we have for it. When we honor that flag, we understand it holds a deep spiritual and patriotic symbolism for this nation, this new nation that was founded and dedicated to personal and religious freedoms. It's 13 stripes representing the original 13 colonies. 
It's red stripes for courage, integrity, and devotion to the point of spilling blood. White stripes for liberty or freedom and equality. Equality because we were all created by God in his image. And we have equal treatment under the law. And we have equal access to opportunity in this country. Now, we're not guaranteed equal outcomes. That part's up to us because we're free will beings. But we have equal access to that opportunity. The blue background on the flag representing heaven, loyalty, and faith in the one true God who guarantees those freedoms that we have. And the 50 stars in the field standing for the 50 states united under this representative republic. The flag is a symbol of the United States Constitution and our Bill of Rights. It is a representation of Abraham Lincoln's philosophy of a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And yet even with all of the things that we celebrate the flag for representing, it's still just that, it's a representation, it's an emblem, it's a symbol. When we stand to salute the flag like, like we did a minute ago and pledge our allegiance to it, we acknowledge this fact. We say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. We honor the flag and we pledge our allegiance to the Republic it so beautifully symbolizes. This Republic, which is one nation, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. No longer just separate and independent states, but now 50 states unified and standing as one unique beacon of liberty and justice and equality in this crazy world. It stands out as that shining light that's on a hill that can't be hidden. And why is that? Why should we be so excited about our nation compared to any other nation in this world? Because our nation was founded on the principle that the final arbiter of justice is the great and righteous judge, God himself. We understand that there must be a final authority, a final court of appeal, a final judge of what is right and wrong, what is just and what is unjust. Our founders believed it, they lived it, some of them died for it, and we affirm and endorse that belief by reciting one nation under God. Lord, please bring us back to that realization that we're in need of your divine guidance in the government that you have entrusted to each and every one of us. And as we govern ourselves, we need to do it by ensuring liberty and justice for all. Liberty or freedom for all, no matter your race, no matter your color, no matter your creed, the principles of our flag stands for our irrespective of any of those things and guarantees that freedom and that liberty to each one of us. We have to protect and preserve our freedom and refuse and repel any form of tyranny, whether it comes from monarchs or oligarchs or dictators, or even if it shows up in the form of unelected bureaucrats, boards or commissions. We must stand for our freedoms and not give them away due to apathy or ignorance or the desire to be provided for from the cradle to the grave by a big bloated government. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but we do need to be more diligent as a, as a nation. Justice for all, not considering the status of the person, but weighing the evidence of their deeds. Justice for all, each one that God has created equal in his sight. We pledge our allegiance because of what this flag stands for. Francis Scott Key wrote a poem that became the Star Spangled Banner that became our national anthem. After seeing the flag known as Old Glory still flying over Fort McHenry after the day-long British bombardment in the War of 1812, he could see that flag at night during, during the bombing because it was the bombs and the rockets were lighting it up. The very bombs and rockets that were trying to take it down were lighting up the flag. The sight of the flag flying over the walls kept his hopes alive. Not only that the symbol, but that the nation might survive the night and might survive the battle. At the first light of day, he was ecstatic to see Old Glory still flying over the walls of the fort. 
Not just because a torn and battered and burned piece of cloth had survived the battle, but because it symbolized that the nation and its ideals are still intact. He was overcome with the hope and the joy of the moment. But he also turned thoughtful of the future at that time. And at the end of his poem, at the end of our song, he asks Americans, all of us who would come after him, he says, oh say, does that Star Spangled Banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave? It was a question all the way down to us today. And it was a challenge to us in two parts. Number one, he says, does the flag still wave? And number two, he says, is it still representative of the land of the free and the home of the brave? And you know, the answers to both of those questions are really up to us and up to the next generations that we will pass this gift along to. Our generation, unfortunately, has actually questioned whether the flag should remain as the nation's symbol, whether it should fly over city halls in schools and other public places. Some have suggested it represents oppression and imperialism and other nonsense. And again, none of you here, you're here at a flag honoring ceremony, let it wave. So I believe that people like you in this crowd and others around this great nation will keep the flag, literally keep the flag flying and push back on that sort of garbage. But the second question to me is even more challenging. Can we keep this precious country free and can we keep it the home of the brave? And what will it take to do so? Well, it'll take people like all the people before us who left our little town of Porterville to fight in World War II. It'll take people like those who left their families to fight in the Korean War. It'll take people like those who sacrificed their lives in record numbers for us in the Vietnam War. It will take people like those willing to go when called to Libya and Iran and Iraq and Panama and Kuwait and Saudi Arabia and Israel, Somalia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Haiti, Serbia, Afghanistan, Yemen, Pakistan, Kenya, the Indian Ocean, Uganda, Niger, Syria, the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aden, anywhere that they are called. People like Ed Flory, a local hero who we're honoring today. He fought for us in the army from the time he was 18, participated in the Battle of the Bulge, and later in the liberation of Hitler's Ordruf concentration camp in Germany in 1945. Amazing amazing service but then from the time he returned until his passing he was a strong advocate and a mentor for youth the military veterans and his community we need the brave we need heroes like ed to continue defending the land of the free and we also need those of us who may have never been or may never will be called to serve we need to come together to raise the awareness that we could actually lose our freedoms if we don't re-engage in our own self-governance. Because in the USA, who's the government? We are. we are. We need to be informed on the issues. Lots of poison is released into our land one bill at a time. We need to stay informed of the issues. We need to follow those who will represent us. If they don't represent us, there needs to be consequences. They need to be replaced and put others in that will represent us. Now last election, I know it was a special election. I know it was confusing, but only 24% of registered voters turned out and cast their votes. That means that out of each 100 people, there's about 40 or 50 of those 100 that are registered to vote. And out of those 40 or 50, only 24% of them voted. That means only 10 or 12 people out of 100 voted in the last election. We won't keep our liberty if, it, if that stays. If, we, if that stays status quo, we can't keep our liberty. We have to do much, much better than that. Again, I know I'm preaching to the choir because every one of you is out there and working hard. But we gotta convince others to do better. Our friends, our families, our coworkers need to be encouraged to rejoin the government by taking more active roles. 
do a better job at engaging with our representatives at the federal, state, and local levels. Let's find out what they're voting for, what they're voting against. Let's support those who are representing us well. We can teach the next generation of the importance of self-governance instead of a continued slide toward reliance on a bloated central government. We can run for school boards, city councils, hospital boards, boards of supervisors, state and federal positions. We can serve on volunteer boards and agencies and community service organizations. We can pass along the legacy of this great community and its ceremonies honoring God, honoring country and family and veterans, and as we're doing today, honoring our nation's flag. This generation, with God's help, can ensure that we answer Mr. Key's question with a resounding yes, this Star Spangled Banner does still wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you. Let's give Dennis Townsend a big round of applause. Well said. Dennis, keep up the great work you do. We appreciate it. And it is your hometown. In a moment, the Porterville Fire Department will lower the old colors. If all the kids and adults who want to help fold that flag go over to that area over there, we will need a lot of help when this flag comes down. How does that sound? You can start moving over there. Captain, it's yours.
one, tight. There, there you go. go. There you go. Just keep her tight. There you go. Got her. The Benevolent and Protective Order of Elks was the first fraternal organization to observe Flag Day. The President of the United States is authorized and requested to issue annual a proclamation calling upon officials of government to display the flag of the United States on all government buildings on such day and urging the people to observe the day as the anniversary of the adoption June 14, 1777. Our first flag. In 1777, the pine tree was adopted by all colonial vessels. The second flag, our southern colonies from 1776 to 1777 used the snake. Our third flag from the landing of the Pilgrims in 1620 until 1775, the flag of England was the flag of the peoples of America. Our fourth flag in the later part of 1775, Constitutional Congress adopted a committee to consider the questions of one single flag of 13 stars for the colonists. Our fifth flag was the adoption of 15 stars and 13 stripes, was founded in 1795. sixth flag in April of 1818 was changed to have 20 stars. Our seventh flag in 1912 we added New Mexico and Arizona.
On July 4th, 1959, a star was added for Alaska, our first non-connected state. A year later, Hawaii, our island state, added the 50th star, our present flag. 50 stars and 13 stripes. Please stand and salute our flag. Thank you. You may be seated. It has been an honor to be here this evening. It's been an honor to be on the Flag Day Committee Chair. Thank you. At this time, the Porterville Fire Department will raise the new flag. And we'll have the...
Again, thank you to the Porterville Fire Department for a wonderful job. Well done. Thank you. In a moment, we will have a rifle salute followed by taps. The rifle salute is done by the American Legion Post 20 Honor Guard. And taps is nobody other than our own director of the American Legion Riders of California, Mr. Mike Smith. We are so fortunate to have a home vehicle. You have no idea. This team here does about 90 funerals military a year. That's a lot out of Porterville. Please, Ed, march! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes the 2024 Porterville Flag Day.